let's spend some time talking about ionic radius, which is, you know, similar to atomic radius, except these are atoms that have charges. So electrons have been either added for negative ions or removed for positive ions. That will change some things for some ions. Let's see. Ionic radius, or how big an ion is, is governed by the same rules as atomic radius for the most part. The number of occupied shells, or the number of energy levels that have electrons in them, is the most important factor to rate things in biatomic, or damn it, ionic radius. More shells will mean a bigger ion. If two ions have the same number of shells, it will come down to the number of protons in the center. If you remember the trend for atomic radius, it decreases as you go across a period because you have the same number of shells, but adding protons means each shell can be held closer simply because the positive nucleus attracts the negative ions. And finally, if you have the same number of protons, which will happen if you're asked to compare two ions of the same element, then more electrons will mean a bigger atom, simply because there is a little bit of extra repulsion between those minus charges floating around. Okay? Now, I want to make... Oh, we're going to do which ones... We're going to play a game called Which One's Larger? Sodium versus Sodium Plus. Well, sodium, on its own, as a metal, has three occupied shells. First shell, second shell, third shell. If you were going to draw the Bohr-Rutherford diagram for Na, it would have two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the second shell, and one electron in the third shell. The sodium plus ion has lost that outer electron and so only has two occupied shells. The one with more shells will be larger, and so Na is larger. In fact, all cations, and to my knowledge, are smaller than the pure elemental form of the atom that has no charge. In any case, fluorine versus fluorine minus. These are the same element. Fluorine, the uh, neutral, has two electrons in the first shell, seven electrons in the second. Fluoride, which has an extra electron, has two in its first shell and eight in its outer shell. That is a complete octet because fluoride prefers to have a minus one charge. In any case, same number of shells, same number of protons because they're the same element. <laughs> the one that has more electrons will be larger. In this case, that is F minus. Now let's do this again. Sodium plus is two, eight, zero because Original sodium, uncharged sodium, I should say, is 281, and it loses an electron to become Na+. Fluorine becomes 28 when it has a minus 1 charge. Oh, so they have the same electron configurations. That's the same number of shells. It's going to come down to the number of protons. Sodium has 11 protons. Fluorine is 9 protons. The one with more protons is smaller because those electrons can be held closer. So, F minus is larger than Na plus. And finally, I've included all of these versus each other. Which is the largest of all these? These are isoelectronic because they all have the same electron configuration. Phosphorus is a 2, 8, 5 normally, but because we have a minus 3 charge, it is 288, a complete third shell. Sulfur is too short of a third shell, so it's S2 minus charge. Two, it's S2 minus electron configuration is 288. Chlorine, also 288. 288 naturally. 2881, but you lose the 1, so it's 288. And 2882, but you lose the outer two, so it's 288. They're all the exact same electron configuration. Let's go back to that original. If they have the same number of shells, and isoelectronic things will have the same number of shells because they have the same number of electrons, more protons equals smaller. So, 
20 proton calcium is smaller than 15 proton phosphorus. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 protons. The one with fewer protons will be the larger ion. Get where I'm going with this? Good. Now, I just wanna make one point here. The beryllium atom on its own normally has two electrons in its first shell and two in its second shell. When you remove those two electrons to become the two plus ion, you only have one shell. Let me make that clear. Beryllium on its own, neutral I should say, has two shells of electrons occupied, and this really only has one shell. Phosphorus on its own actually has three occupied shells. And when you complete the octet, as you do for non-metals, you actually preserve the number of shells. It's only the metals that are changing the number of shells when you create the positive charges because you're losing electrons there. And so, all of the metals should be smaller than their atoms are. I strategically picked these two because beryllium on its own has an atomic radius of 111 picometers, and phosphorus's uh, atomic radius is 110. They're basically the same size when they're neutral. If you're wondering how that's the case, this has three occupied shells and more protons. Two occupied shells and fewer protons. Those kind of cancel each other out by the time you get here, but you would not be expected to know that. This only has one shell. You should expect it to be smaller. And it is. The beryllium 2 plus atom has a size of only 27 picometers. Phosphorus 3 minus, which we've added electrons to, and so there's extra repulsion between the electrons, bulges to, I'm just looking it up on my ionic radius chart, phosphorus bulges to 212 picometers. Look at that. The non-metals get larger when you add electrons and the metals get smaller because you're losing electrons. Cool? Let's just recap that. Ionic size comes down to number of shells occupied. There is it. Here it is. Ionic radius comes down to number of shells. More shells means a bigger ion, generally. If you have the same number of shells, it comes down to the number of protons. More protons will give you a smaller ion. And if they happen to be of the same element, same number of protons, then more electrons will give you a bigger ion because of the repulsion between them. Under eight minutes, best of luck to you.